What's going on everyone? Welcome to another run here in American Truck Simulator. Sunday test drive rolling at you right now. And right now, as you can see, I've got the Freightliner Cascadia. And this is basically the new workhorse of the trucking fleet. Every day going to and from work, I drive roughly two and a half hours round trip. And I see more of these trucks than probably anything else. Uh, they're fleet trucks for Walmart for uh, they've got Warner on there as well I mean, the list goes on of how many trucks JB Hunt Schneider you know the list goes on uh, these trucks are everywhere and I honestly don't know why uh, it could be because they're good on fuel economy it could be maintenance it could be price you know when they're first bought uh, you know it, companies uh, will buy will buy nowadays they'll buy brand new trucks like this and even though they might cost a little bit more uh, than say a Volvo or a Pete 579 you know they'll still buy this because maybe in the long run you know the fuel costs that are estimated with this truck are gonna be cheaper than with the Volvo so they're gonna make that money back and then some um, maintenance costs possibly as well could be another reason so these the, these companies buy these trucks not just because of what we they see on the price tag we'll usually buy our cars by the price tag companies nowadays they're smart they don't want to do that I mean it does have some effect in it you know they're not gonna pay fifty thousand dollars more you know uh, for this truck compared to a Peterbilt they'll buy the Peterbilt but if this trucks five thousand dollars more maybe ten and maybe they're gonna get a bigger or better discount because they're gonna buy in bulk 10 15 20 even more hundred uh, 100 trucks uh, you know it, maybe they got a better discount but you know if they can make that money back and then some compared to what they might get with a Volvo or a Peterbilt or a Kenworth then you know they'll buy this truck and vice versa same goes the other way around so today they got the Cascadia this is 1.1 from Solaris and he's done a very nice job with this truck it looks very beautiful very nice very well put together it is a little lacking in the mods I'm kind of upset with that, but then again, I'm not, because these are fleet trucks. They're not supposed to be made up with chrome and lights galore and everything else. They're not supposed to be an option whore, as I've mentioned before with another truck. These are fleet trucks. They're not, you know, full-blown custom rigs. So I can live without the, all the extra options. I mean, I wouldn't have minded being able to choose the lights that go on the bumper or choose the lights that go on the running board over here or maybe have the option for dual stacks you know things like that little nitpick things there are more options on the inside of this thing because of SISL if I remember correctly that's a standalone mod normally but it's included in here and it adds a whole bunch of little knickknacks things you can dangle from your CV radio like minions uh, uh, you can put in different types of drinks into your cup holder from uh, I think I saw, I think it was Pepsi to Monster to a bottle of water. Magazines you can put on the passenger seat or on the floor. You know, all these little things you can add in there. Normally for me, I really don't care. But for some people, they like cluttering up everything on the inside of the cab to each their own. So, today's run is taking me from Flagstaff, Arizona to Nogales to the plaster and sons I have a load of gypsum tipsing tipping the scales at 34,500 which would require that 20 foot container to have the triple axle for the trailer uh, I had mentioned in a comment and I'll do the same here as we go along the difference between the tan the regular dual axle and triple axle tandems here for 20s for the 20 footers and why the 30 or not the 30 to 40 footers don't have them so a lot of you guys will say, alright, that makes a lot of sense, but I'll go through it anyway. Let's get on the road here. I've got 12 hours, 12 and a half hours to get there. GPS, I'm gonna, says I'm going to be there in just under 8. I should be good on fuel. I'm good on sleep. Let's get rolling. Underneath the hood right now is a Cummins ISX-15 with 500 horsepower. Bolted up to an Eaton Fuller 18-speed, no retarder transmission. It is not an option with this one, so... You get a retarder with almost everything else, even a 15-speed with retarder, but the 18-speed does not have an option for it. Now, 
I've been around a little bit already here in Arizona, and I'm kind of liking what I see. It's very nicely done. In fact, in my opinion, it's actually better than California and Nevada. And that might not be saying much. That might not be saying much to some people, but, uh... You know, for me, it kind of is. I mean, they had how many years to put the game together, and now they've come out and with this DLC, and it's even better. And before I get moving, I'm going to make one change here, because something is annoying the hell out of me. So I'm just going to pull over here and make this change. There we go. It could be me. I'm sitting too high in my chair, maybe, but... I don't like feeling I'm about to hit the roof. So, with that done, time to get back on the road. Hit that splitter too soon. Speaking of splitters, I will not have to worry about that soon because I have finally been able to order my CSIO 18 speed full, uh, Eaton Fuller shifter. It was the KSRS. Ordered that on Friday, so. And I've already sent a message asking, you know, just ballpark, you know, give me, give me an idea when I can expect it. You know, is it going to be possibly this month, possibly next month? Am I looking at August, September, you know? Because I understand he's busy, and he's got a lot of orders to fulfill. And he got back to me pretty quick. And let me know that uh, it could be possibly end of this month or early next month. So, I can definitely live with that, I understand, you know, I'm not in any hurry for it. I am really looking forward to having it, and I told him, I said, you know, that'd be great, because this shifter is going to get double duty. It's going to be my shifter for this, obviously, as well as, I'm not changing it out, so it's going to be the shifter as well I use for, uh, for iRacing. Which isn't going to affect me too much because I don't do any road racing. But it should be interesting to see how that plays out. Didn't give credit to 
people who actually made the mod, you know, took the credit themselves. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty. That's pretty damn shady. Well, uh, 
I almost forgot I was going to talk about this. The trailer as well is part of a uh, Steam pack that came out. I did have the 20 and I did have the 20 foot 2 tandem and I believe there's a 20 foot 3 tandem or 3 axle uh, container trailer pack out there. Now someone took both of those, combined them together and made one on Steam that you can download. You subscribe to it and you download it. And so I did that one and deleted the other, well, deactivated the other two. So this is uh, the first time hauling a 20 footer with it. And so far it has not changed what it is like it did in the last uh, episode a, a few weeks ago where I hauled a, a 20 footer. That was actually the mod That was uh, the mod itself that I downloaded from the site and it can be found in the Google Docs. This one so far so good. It looks good. Nicely detailed. As for the double and triple axles, these things, these, these 20 foot containers have a couple of different weight limits on them and then it all comes down to what the state you're in requires. And let me see if I can get close enough on the back here, no it's all kind of worn away. You can see the weight limits printed right on the back, 62,170 pounds. 28,000, no, let's see, yeah, I think that is the way. You've got different weights with this thing, and that will determine what kind of chassis trailer it needs to be on. Because even though you can probably put it on a, on a double, or just a regular tandem chassis trailer, the weight limit laws within that state could negate that, couldn't make it so where it can't be that way. Uh, length is the main reason why as well, and that's why you'll have these drive-in trucks where the axles, the rear tandems can move. So the states like to have the weight spread out as much as they can, but they also understand that the trailer does need its support. And so trailers like this one having 62,000 pounds uh, basically sitting all on the axle right there, right behind the truck. It's not something they really want. So they put on the triple. And actually what they can also do with that is they can, on some of them, take those rear axles on the trailer and shift them back as well. So the, the container itself is basically sitting on the chassis with nothing underneath it, like a regular trailer, because they took the trailer axles and slid them back further so that helps distribute the weight as well so it's all about weight that's why you're going to see the difference in the axles between the two and the three so if you see a trailer that has three axles on the on it you can pretty much be rest assured that it's a heavy trailer it's going to be it's going to have quite a bit of weight on it now you're not going to see that on a 40 footer because they're pretty much already at max weight as it is so as well as the whole length part as well. So basically throwing a triple on there doesn't really help anything. It won't alleviate any problem, it won't fix anything. Now that could be different in some states, but like I said it all depends on the weight limit laws within that state and what they require. That's why driving can be such a pain in the ass because you're responsible as a driver to know what the laws are in each of these states. Yeah, you can probably sit there and blame your dispatcher for sending you somewhere and they probably should have known better, but who's still going to get that ticket? You know, who's still going to get parked? Who's going to have to wait while another truck or a wrecker comes out to move your load or or to actually unload you you are so blame your dispatcher all you want 
you need to know where you're going and what you can and can't do. So in this case, triple axle, that means this thing's got some weight to it. And as you saw, it's 37,000 pounds, 34,000 pounds. So that works, but we are here. The gypsum is delivered. Time to unhook this thing and call it a day. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for uh, others. I do have the quick trip for this one ready to go. I've got another 389 video ready to go. And of course there's the Wednesday live stream multiplayer. And yeah, all types of fun coming up. So thank you everyone for watching. Take it easy.